Alrighty, well, morning everybody, and uh, it's cast time once again, and I'm most certainly going to preface this by saying this is probably going to be a long cast, and there's going to be a there's going to be a bunch of visuals, a bunch of moving parts in here too, so there, just get ready for some mistakes, because I had a, I kind of just did a, just quickly whipped all this together, so not much planning involved. Um, but in the music, and I'm probably not going to have the music on very long. Um, you'll, you'll find out why here later, but this is going to be Fife, uh, their fifth album. So, we'll go and get that going. Ah, looks like I goofed up already. Back up. Okay, um... I wasn't going to talk about this last, but uh, just on the spur of the moment, I'll go ahead and talk about it first. Uh, for those that don't know, I kind of, I think I said this in one of my earlier casts, I'm kind of burnt out on playing this game, Gems of War, but what I'm going to, what I'm going to go ahead and do, I probably won't play this game at all on my work nights, instead of just playing it on my off nights. Um, and most likely it's going to be off stream and I used to I used to do all the dailies and stuff the very moment that uh, at 1 a.m. my time 1 a.m. Um, that's what all the dailies re dailies reset I would usually try to get them all done then but a uh, problem with that is, is uh, by the time I get them get them done I'm usually scurrying trying to get my uh, cast all set up so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just uh, play this game like probably like the late evening at night that kind of thing um, but yeah and then just do it do it then and on top of it um, having all evening and all night to do this it's gonna free me up to maybe even make a video you know maybe you know make a gems of war video or something like I used to do so So, but at least that's that's what I got going right now as far as gems of war. I mean, I'm I'm burnt I'm burnt out on playing the game, but at the same time I don't want to completely quit. So, so but that like I said, this is that's what I got going right now. Just gonna just gonna play it like in the evening and at night. And then, Louis Anderson, uh, the legendary stand-up comedian, he passed away yesterday. So, kind of sucked to see him go, but, oh, no, just, just like Robin Williams, I grew up, I grew up with this guy. Um, in fact, I'm gonna have to do some, uh, outside fact-checking on it, but there was an old show that was on when I was a kid called Star Search. I think... I think he got his start on that program. Let me find out. Okay, um, I'm on the wiki right now. Oh, and this and this is something else too. Um, like myself, Louis Anderson's a Minnesotan. Yeah. Yeah, he's born and raised in Minnesota, like myself. I totally forgot about that. But yeah, apparent no, apparently he wasn't. He wasn't um uh, I thought he got a start on Star Search. It was like this uh like seventies or eighties show that had uh it was hosted by Ed McMahon. I'm guessing they probably took pity on him from being such a sidekick on uh the Johnny Carson show, the Tonight Show. They went ahead and uh gave Ed McMahon his own show. So. 
But yeah, like I, like I said though, um, I, I grew up with this guy. Just did a bunch of stand-up shows. Um, like, roll that toaster out on the lawn. But not the cord. Sorry if you don't get the reference. But um, I'm uh, I'm gonna take a drink of some uh, Arizona green tea. And I, I probably should have scrolled to the bottom of the wiki page to find out how he died. But I'm guessing since he was pretty much morbidly obese when he passed, um, I'm guessing it was probably something obesity related like heart disease or cancer or something. Or maybe diabetes. At least, that, at least that's what I'm guessing. Like something like that. Okay, I gotta do something. was all Louie and then um sometime after that I just kept on watching uh Mike Judge's Tales from the Tour Bus um like I said on my last cast I totally forgot how awesome the show is it's one of the few uh modern day shows that I actually enjoy watching um I didn't think he uh he does Mike Judge for those that don't know um he's the guy that he's the guy he was the creator of uh Beavis and Butthead but uh, he also did a, but he did this show too, Tales from the Tour Bus. He would uh, bring people in, interview them, and I, I believe he did an old technique called rotoscoping, where uh, he draws the animation, or he does, you know, he gets all of his footage, you know, does it live action. Like I said, he brings them in, interviews them, and then after uh, after it's all been recorded, he uh, just draws the cartoon animation over, like. Like frame by frame by frame, each and every single piece of uh, or each and every single frame of those videos is uh, drawn over. So that was how he did this show. So it was also a, for lack of a better word, a more a more sophisticated way of uh, showcasing country. Or you know, it's it's presented in such a way that I. You know, I actually don't mind the country music when they play it and stuff. I mean, part of that—I mean, part of that too—is uh, this is all like old, old outlaw country. But you know, but you kind of get the idea. So, but and I gotta go do something real quick. So, kind of a, but yeah, but yeah. Pardon the interruption. I'll be right back. I had to take an ibuprofen because yeah it was a pretty rough pretty rough work week and we have a whole bunch of a whole bunch of people had quit or not quit but uh, a whole bunch of people had to take a uh, COVID leave so a lot of a lot of columns so we were pretty well short-handed which means uh, a lot of extra work for me so yeah the old lower back just couldn't handle it But anyway, moving right along, and uh, started playing a brand new game um, as of uh, yesterday, the day before, Windjammers 2. And uh, I remember uh, I played the first one back in the 90s when it was on Neo Geo. Oh god, I, it, but I, I freaking loved it. But again, I didn't play it that much. So, but now this is pretty much going to be an everyday thing for me, uh, much streaming. Always starting out with Windjammers 2.
So, but anyway, let me go ahead and get this going. Ah, my controller died. Hold on. But like I said, um, I warned every, I warned everybody at the start. There's a lot of moving parts in this. And I'll go ahead and put the music on because, unlike most of these new obscure games, the music on here is actually pretty awesome. Just to give everybody a little taste of how this works. So, there, just pick your player. Um, one of the other things about this game I like is you actually got. They actually got pudgy people in here. Or he ain't. But yeah. I mean most most of these fighting games, usually usually the guys look like fucking steroid addicts. They're all like like that, like big massive and beefy. So it's nice to get a big bear in there for once. Do it! So like I said, this is just gonna be a quick demo. Just to give you an idea as to how this works. Yeah, I'll just go with Arena. But the goal in this game is to hit the other's goal. So. Yeah, screw that up. And, um, and believe it or not, there's also a parry mechanic in here. Just like fighting games, it, more, of, more on this later, but me, I consider this a fighting game, but like I said, I'll talk more about it here after I'm done demoing this. But yeah, there's a, there's a parry mechanic. Three points. Push on the downside. Can't do it while moving. Oh, she won that one. Get ready. Three points. Three points. Yep, like I said, you, you can pair. Just like fighting games, there's a parry mechanic in here. So you kind of get the idea here. Stop. Yeah, I keep forgetting. You can't move while parrying. There we go. <laughs> Mic drop. Like a, but, but like I said a few minutes ago too. You know, unlike a lot of other obscure new games that came out, the music in here is actually pretty awesome. Most of the time, it's ass. I think the first time I played this, I had to shut. I went ahead and just, you know, based on that, just went ahead and killed the music and brought in my own. Then I, you know, figured at least give it a give it a listen. I went on YouTube, you know. Type down Windjammers 2 OST. I'm listening to like this shit's awesome. So yeah, like I said, it's one of the re one of the other reasons I like this game. Aside from the gameplay, but um, but uh, I would also here. Let me go ahead and quit. Not a very bright move on my part.
But, but I was, that was something else too. Um, I mean, I'm one of I'm one of those that I actually consider when Jammers 2 to be a fighting game. You know, at least in my mind, close enough. I mean, you're basically in combat with directly within a in direct combat with another player. You know, whereas I think uh, the fighting game orthodoxy would probably be, how could it be a fighting game when you're not punching people in the face? I'm like, well, I, close enough, I say. You know, and then um, kind of like uh, I kind of said the same thing, same thing about jazz music too. Am I up? My top five all-time favorite albums, Diggable Planets, is uh, number five. It uh, holds the distinction of being both my all-time favorite rap album and my all-time favorite jazz album. But again, you know, the jazz orthodoxy would probably would probably say, "Oh, it's not jazz music. If it wasn't made by Louis Armstrong, it's not jazz at all." Or, if it wasn't made back in the 1940s or 50s, this is not jazz. You know, or you, you, you know that kind, you know that kind of thing. I mean, you know, it's it's 2022. You know, or when the uh, when Reachin' was made, I think it was like early 90s. You know, it ain't the 20s, 30s, or 40s anymore. You know, it's like they're wearing the tin foil fedora. You know, so on my, you know, to me, as long as it sounds jazzy, close enough. I mean, hell, based on that, um, another cool jazz song, um, called Linger Pickin' Good by the Revolting Cox. I mean, they're definitely not a jazz, they're not a jazz band. I think they're industrial, industrial metal, but they, they got a jazz, to me, they got a jazz song in there. Again, close enough. And then, and another screw up. So, okay. So, working on it right now. So, but anyway, anyway, like I was saying, you know, I'm sure a lot of, you know, a lot of people say, oh, that's not, that's not jazz, you know, or then, you know, win jammer too. Oh, that's not a fighting game. <laughs> You're fighting the other player close enough. I mean, just, just because you're not punching and kicking your opponent doesn't mean it, it's not a fighting game. So, but, um. And then um, one other thing I do need to talk about. Kind of an offshoot. Yeah, but like like I said, there I've already made a whole bunch of mistakes on this. So and I, I don't want to spend too much time on this. So but I, I do feel I need to get this out. Go ahead and kill this. And yeah, screen's gonna be black for a while. Guilty Gear Exar. Rev 2. So, let me go ahead and get... And then I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and do this. I'll go ahead and I'll turn the music up. Yeah, cause uh, I think I played this before, and um, YouTube didn't flag my video for copyright, so I think I'm okay. But. Who dares to enter the Ah, but I just um. Uh, but um, I also streamed some uh, Rev 2, 
And uh, I played my... I, no, I didn't play Potemkin, but... You know, if I could find the guy, I did play some Faust. So, but uh, played him for a little while. Then um, I played... Uh, I fired up another character, this guy here, Axel Lowe. Axel Lowe. Yeah, let me turn my dun let me turn my dummy off. But yeah, this guy here. Is, he's he's kind of like Dalsum in Street Fighter. But, um, this is... Okay, I forgot what I was going to say. But this is also another game that uses, uh... Uses a lot of motion inputs. As you can see here... Again. But as you can see here though, play this guy a while. And yeah, he's got a like all the other characters, he's got a bunch of uh, motion inputs. So Mangle my controller. Um uh, but one other thing I was one other thing I wanted to mention though. about these they're a uh, big hitter moves yeah it was these ones here they're off uh, instant instant kill abilities Destroy. So that was so that was something else I learned about this game. Actually, technically, no. This is only training mode. So. Go back here real quick. You know, but uh. But anyway, that was uh, that was pretty much all I wanted to show on that. Oh, 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 oh wait, 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 nope. Um, but uh, anyway, I played this guy for a while. Um, kind of like him, but like he plays like Dalsum. And uh, one of my uh, 
One of my main characters when I played Fantasy Strike was Archigarg, who who is also a, a ranging character. Yeah, one of my little gripes too. That's an anti-air move, but in order to do it, I have to be moving forward. I mean, I mean, for anti-air moves, I'd rather be moving backwards. I mean, anti-air is actually a defensive move, so it doesn't really make much sense to doesn't really make much sense to be doing a defensive move while moving forward, which is what you do when you're attacking. So, but yeah, um, Argagarg has that problem. Um, Dalsum, for the brief period of time that I played him, he's got, he kind of has that problem too. I, mean, I want to do my anti air as we're moving backwards, not forwards. Best case scenario would be, um, yeah, it's that one. That's the best case scenario when you're, uh, crouching. Okay, but anyway. Anyway, gotta move along. So we can go ahead and kill that. But you know, but but anyway. One of my um and also one of my one of my all time favorite uh fighting game videos. Um you guys have probably heard me say about this before, but fighting the game, motion inputs, this is one of my biggest stumbling blocks when it comes to fighting games. Just, you know, it's like I'm, it's like I'm basically just like the video says, I'm basically more, spending more time fighting the game than my opponent. So, but, um, one other thing that, I, that was on this video, though, was, uh, I guess, the more modern games, I don't know if, you'll, if um, Guilty Gear Rev 2 was one of these, but there was like some kind of close enough movement. Like, um, your motion inputs don't no longer have to be perfect. But as long as you get most of that motion right, then the the game will go ahead and count it. But it kinda go it was kinda going back to what I was saying about you know, go what I was saying about Diggable Planets. My all-time favorite jazz album. You know, but it's not jazz. It's rap. You know, but again, I say close enough. You know, again, it's not the, it's not the 30s, 40s, and 50s anymore. You know. You know, and, and this, this uh, guy that made the video was saying the same thing. You know, it's not the 90s anymore. You know, we don't, we don't play. You know, we play with console now. We we no longer play with uh with arcade cabinets. The most you're gonna see now is like arcade sticks. Your yeah, fight sticks. You might see those. I but uh that but that that's about it. I mean you're gonna see also a lot of players with uh with what I use, a PlayStation 4 controller. You're gonna see a lot of players with what are called hitboxes, which which is literally nothing but buttons. Like, there is no controller, no analog stick, no nothing. Like, you're up, down, left, right. Those are all buttons. So you're going to see those kind of controllers now. So, I mean, there's many ways, these days, there's many different ways to play a game. So, and uh, I think uh, the modern day fighting games are taking that into consideration. So now, again, now it's close enough. But again, I don't. I don't know if, if the uh, the Guilty Gear that I'm playing, Rev 2, I don't know if they fall into that close enough category. So, but, I mean, yeah, that, in fact, now that I think about it, I was actually, originally I think this was going to be a pretty short cast. I was just basically going to show the game, you know, when Jammers 2 and, uh, and Rev 2, and that was about it. So, you know, but, um, what I'm talking about now was just something I came up with 
while actually in the process of make, making this cast. So, I definitely wanted to add it because I saw a parallel here. Um, back in the early to mid 2000s, um, I had a, I had access to Yahoo Chat or chat, at Yahoo Chat. Um, and then you could um, you could play music in the chat room. Um, and uh, I was on a, I was on a jazz chat room. But I think if it was, is my jazz collection wasn't near what everybody else's was. Everybody else is playing old traditional jazz. In fact, uh, this was, uh, I played a, I started playing, I started playing this very album, Diggable Planets, um, which was basically met with mixed reviews. Some of the people liked the, uh, some of the people actually liked it, but a, a lot of them didn't, you know. This isn't jazz music, Joe. You know, it's, you know, close enough. You know, again, some people are just stuck in the past. That's the phrase I was looking for. Stuck in the past. But anyway, I gotta, I gotta take another drink here. Hold on. You know, so, I guess, I got, yeah. <laughs> 32 minutes in, so yeah, I'm definitely gonna need to wind this down. Kind of a quick, kind of a quick recap. You know, just like I consider Windjammers to be a type of fighting game, again, I've also considered Diggable Planets, their Reaching album, a jazz album as well as a rap album. A perfect fusion between the two. Now, it also needs to be, needs to be said, I tried listening to their second album, Blowout comb, eh, not quite there. I gotta, I don't know what. I think it was basically another attempt to improve on perfection. So it, it didn't work. It, I don't, I don't want to say it didn't sit well with me. It just, oh god, there's got to be a better phrase. Oh, it didn't jive with me. Yeah, there, it, there's a perfect phrase for this, but it's on the tip of my tongue. But, but otherwise, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and call it good here. Yeah, yeah, I kind of, kind of went a little over long on this one, but, and so I pretty much said all the things that I wanted to, and then some. So, but although. Otherwise, um, just thanks for dropping in, or thanks for tuning in and listening to me, everybody. I appreciate that. And um, I should be able to make another one of these tomorrow morning. And hopefully better prepared, and hopefully I won't be so damn wishy-washy. So, but until then, though, everybody, thanks again for coming by, and see you all next time. Bye for now.